What's going on? We just heard some people talking out in there, and there's like fun. Guys, it is getting pretty crazy around here. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today we've got something which is going to piss you right the hell off like it has pissed me right the hell off. So if you don't know what's been happening over in Maui recently, there's been a wildfire, a very, very wildfire. It's been really sad and it's killed a lot of people so far over a hundred people and um, with the potential of killing a lot more, so many people unaccounted for at the moment. It's basically wiped out an entire town it's just really really horrible and um you know it's it's been all over the news you've probably seen it and you probably have the same feelings about it as most people do however what you and i have never done is film it and this is what this lot have done not enough nelsons who i have covered quite a few times before due to their very extreme ability to um, exploit their kids and um, their growing empire of kids uh, they are growing to become youtubers to exploit their kids and their, their older kids exploit their younger kids and you know it's a whole it's insane right but here's what they did they were in maui when this all broke out that was lucky for them wasn't it so um yeah they filmed it and uh, they are currently releasing a sub a succession of videos shall we say so far five videos have gone up relating to the in their words the heartbreak how to pack for Maui with 16 kids before the heartbreak. Flying to Maui with 16 kids before the heartbreak. See, those two were clearly filmed before it and uploaded after they got back home. Me and my family were in Maui when the heartbreak began. And then we have, how will I get my kids home? during the heartbreak god forbid and finally we have finding our way back home with 16 kids during the heartbreak oh it's so much so much oh my god right i i feel so angry that they've used not just one two three four but five times each one of these were filmed either before, during, or after, immediately after this, the Maui fires, right? The tragedies. And they have clearly uploaded them afterwards when they got home, because otherwise they wouldn't know that it was before the heartbreak, if you know what I mean. So they've waited till they got home, collated all the, that they had, and then unleashed it onto the world to say look at us we were here and here's the heartbreak the maui tragedy it it's insane profiting of it is insane i know what it says in the description i've read it don't worry we are donating everything to the maui um you know donating it to and helping people basically which is you know it's nice okay i'll give them that however what they don't need to do and i guarantee they do not need to do this is they do not need to film it and upload it to youtube in order to help out they make so much money through their videos their youtube channel and i believe that they are also wealthy aside from their youtube so you know they do not need to upload any of this in order to um help out right they can just donate and um they can afford to donate without filming it a lot of youtubers do this they film themselves doing good deeds and say look at us look how amazing we are um with that it gets um it garners kind of like oh my god this guy is 
the, these people are, are nice people and they do they do good and they will help out and, and we're going to sub to them and we're going to watch the rest of their videos because they're good people. So these good deeds are never, ever done selflessly, ever, in my opinion. I mean, they might be good people, they might do good things. I don't think that these are good people in general, based on all the videos that I've seen of them. And, um, it, yeah, it, it's just not, it's not a good deed if you have to film it to show yourself being that good person, okay? I get when you are filming yourself every day and you want to do a good deed if people, you know, you might want to say you've done it. But mostly, if you need to film yourself doing that good deed, then it's not a good deed. Just do it and keep it to yourself. You don't need the world to know you're a good person if you're a good person, basically, right? So we're going to take a little run through a couple of these um you know, good deed videos that they they somehow they got caught up in the fires, right? So as you can see by the thumbnail, it looks intense, you know. So um, let's see how they got on and uh, if they managed to get themselves out of there because the the titles were quite, you know, how do we get home? Will we make it home? Sort of thing. It sounds quite. Remember, these are kids. You know, kids are watching these kids. And the kids that are watching are thinking, please, I hope they got home safely. So there's that, that side to it as well, don't forget. What's going on? We just heard some people so talking out in there, and there's like, fun, fun. Guys, it is getting pretty crazy around here. And that was the intro to their big um, fire reveal, right? So it you can tell by the dramatic music that that was kind of insensitive from straight off the bat, you know, trying to drum up like, excitement because it was a big fire and uh, lots of people died. You know, it, it's kind of a bit sick. Maui Emergency Part 1. So they knew when they were editing this that there was going to be multiple parts and they were going to make it into a series because why wouldn't you, you know? So many people died, you know, but we need to tell the story of how we escaped such a tragedy. Hey guys, before this video starts, I just wanted to come on here and quickly say a couple of things. The emergency began during this video and I just want to let all of you know we did not know what this would turn into and so please give us grace as it unfolds slowly over the day. Okay, right, so the tragedy unfolds as you're filming it so fair enough you don't need to um well you don't need to carry on filming it for one thing that is pretty um what's the word when you uh, film people dying and um in with the intention of using it for your own gain what's that word I'm not quite sure, but it is up there with um, one of the worst things that you can do, right? Because you know that this is such a bad tragedy, right? And your first thought is, let's whip out the camera, see if we can get a good shot, right? Because at the time, you didn't think to yourself, hang on, people are going to need this as like um, a resource so we can help all these people, right? They, that wasn't in your mind because you didn't know at the time that that would be a thing. So you, but you did get out the camera, film all these um, people struggling and, and everything else. And yeah, it was, um, that was your only thought. That is unbelievable as a human being to actually think that. And then once you had filmed it all, you didn't need to upload it. So it doesn't matter that, um, you know, you're trying to say, oh, this is how it all unfolded and please give us some grace because we didn't know what was happening. Put your camera away. That's all you had to do. 
Hey guys, welcome back to Not Enough Nelson. So this morning we woke up in our beautiful hotel room and I went to go turn on the bathroom light and there's no power. And we're like, okay. So we try to call down and just a busy signal. So we go down and we find out that the power is out because there is a hurricane. Not, not a super big one, but a big enough one. Knocked out all the power on this whole like half of the island. Okay, so if people don't realize the one of the reasons why these fires occurred was because of this hurricane which she is blithering on about right now and um, she knows at the point they're editing this they know the reason for the fires was the hurricane so to be just say blase about it about the hurricanes yeah it's all fine it's all fine not a big hurricane was it no but by this point editing it they got do know that it was a serious thing about they don't need to add this bit to the video because it's not important to um be so blase about uh, such a tragic event which was about to unfold there's high wind warnings and we're not supposed to be on the water so our surfing got cancelled our zip lining got cancelled and now we are just thinking what are we going to do for this again not super um, sensitive you know so you have to think about this as after the event because whilst she's saying it yep she doesn't know that there's about to be um, a massive fire which is going to kill a bunch of people she doesn't know that at the time but since they know that now it comes across as a very insensitive the fact that she's complaining that uh, they won't be able to go zip lining or zip wiring or whatever the hell it was or they you know they don't know where to go for breakfast or their surfing is cancelled you know it's quite insensitive given the nature of what is about to unfold so note to self even on vacation it is a good idea to have an emergency disaster plan of what you would do it maybe like always have enough food in your like hotel room we do have some food but we're kind of I'm not sure if she means an emergency disaster plan as disastrous as um, a bunch of people dying or just the fact that they don't have anything for breakfast, you know. Could be either or where, where they're concerned, but, you know. <laughs> Out of breakfast food, so we were going to just take a drive and see if we can find <coughs> anywhere that's open. So far, no luck. So that is our first thing we're gonna try to do is find somewhere that we can grab some breakfast food or you know somewhere that's open that we can eat at. But all of the stoplights are out and so it's taking like forever to get around. We've got some food but the kids are super sick of it. It's basically just like goldfish and some other junk food and so we're gonna try to find something a little bit more stable in it. Otherwise, maybe we can hit the grocery store. Like, I don't know how their grocery stores work here. Like, if they're out of power, like- Well, if they're out of power, the deli stuff is probably gonna be bad. Yeah, I don't know. Well, they probably have generators, I would yeah. guess. Yeah. They have like a backup energy thing, so they got the elevators to work in our hotel, but yeah. nothing else. Yeah. It was um, scary though. Like, I couldn't go to bed because it was like shaking the thing, and I was like over here, I'm like, and Beckham's literally dead asleep, and so is Ellie. I'm like, yeah, the wind was pretty bad last night. I kept yeah. dreaming that we were like in, I don't know, what I was having, not having good dreams. But I woke up, I looked out. It doesn't look that super scary, but they just said for the next four hours it's gonna be pretty you know, like high winds and like stay out of the water and stuff like that. So I'm like, okay, everyone get in the van, let's buckle up and let's go try to find somewhere to eat. So that's the current status. So we'll let you know as the day unfolds. All right, so as you see, there is no stoplights working. So in the But you see what I mean about, you know, it seems all very insensitive. You know, once they know what is actually happening, what has happened and what's about to happen, and they still edit it the way they do in order to think, oh, well, what's going to happen? Oh, it's so exciting. And this happened and that happened. And we were a little bit scared, but we weren't that scared. But then they know what happens afterwards. So to edit it like this and upload it like this just feels really, really bad. I'm sorry. What's going on? So we just heard some people so talking out in there. And there's like a fire going on huge fire there's what? kids are even saying that there's smoke outside that you can see oh no oh no there's a big fire over there shoot is it coming this way i don't think so i'm sure they'll get it out by the time it comes over here but that's not good oh boy it's pretty bad over there 
Praying for the people they can get out fast. It doesn't cause too much damage or hurt anybody. I don't know. It's probably following the wind, so it's probably going that way. Guys, not not so bad. Just turned to really bad because that fire is so so bad for the people it's affecting and the, the islanders and so forth. What a nightmare for everybody. All right, guys, so we just heard from one of the workers here that they are actually evacuating some of the people here to go and make sure their house is okay. So I guess it's just going really close to the high end, a lot of people's houses, and so, ugh, so scary. Yes, you may not have known how bad it was right at the very minute. I get that and I appreciate it, but you do now. And that is the point. You do now and yet you still uploaded it for profit. Yes, you're going to donate it, you reckon. But you could do that anyway without uploading it. There's no need to, um, what's the word when you uh, you exploit um, people? exploitation you don't need to exploit dead people or people who are going through such tragedies and um, at this moment in time we still don't know how many people have passed away from this there's apparently there's thousands of people still unaccounted for so it could be a lot so you know have some respect at least the not so good news is I think that maybe a cell tower is down because we definitely do not have cell or Wi-Fi and so we're not able to really reach out and text anybody or anything. It's a little concerning, just I don't know why, it's kind of concerning, but I think we're going to be okay. The wind is still pretty windy and that fire is still going really strong, um, but I, I just feel like we're going to be okay. I'm not super stressed, so we'll keep you up to date as we learn more. Will you sing that again? No. It was awesome. Uh, that's Sadie. Yeah. There's look, look Sadie there. and the two boys. There's, Mr. There's Beckham running away from Nady. The wind was so strong, it blew two of the chairs into the pool. I don't think we're going to be getting any power on anytime soon. Paisley is down there. She's supposed to do a little Randall picture for this sweatshirt she got for free. <laughs> Sadly, look at that fire. It is still going so strong. Charging stations are a little bit full, but Journey found a good spot. Guys, it is getting pretty crazy around here. There's a bunch of people here. They've evacuated a lot of area of Lahaina, and so I think a lot of people are coming here. Um, and I think we're the only like place, this hotel's the only place that has an open like restaurant for travelers. Um, there's a huge line to the food area, and so, I don't know, this, this hotel's amazing though, I must say, like, really amazing in this situation. Like, obviously, if people from other places are coming here, it's obviously, we've got some good things in place to help things kind of go as usual, even though it's crazy. Alright guys, this is the current situation here. Lahaina is still major. So is this the actual point? in time where you gathered all the kids together to um pose for the thumbnail what a very 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 odd thing to do whilst there is a major wildfire going on killing a bunch of people and um destroying the homes of many 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 more and yet you think ah, what can we do at this time we're a little bit bored we what, what can we do I know, let's get all the kids together and let's get the thumbnail sorted at least because we're going to need that, aren't we? And yeah, fucking idiots. Really on fire. That looks relatively close. Okay, guys, come here for one second. So, Journey's downstairs. She's charging the like chargers and everything to make that get ready. Does, does everybody have at least one bottle of water? We need one. Okay, I think I got a couple extra in there. Need a bottle of water. The store is still taking cash, so if we need to buy some more, we should go to the store and buy some more uh, water. Everyone should have at least one thing of water. Um, 
You guys are so cute. Just in case, I don't think the fire will get close. I just talked to the guy at the front and he was super worried about his family. He hasn't been able to talk to his family for several hours. I think we should offer a prayer for all the people over in Lahaina, but he was saying if it was his family, he would not evacuate prematurely and take the family out into the wind with all the little kids and everything. He said, you're safer here. He said, if there's even a remote chance, they will evacuate. And he said, they go over a PA system, we would all hear it and we could evacuate. So on the off chance, well, I don't think that's gonna happen, but just in case, we could evacuate without anything, right? And we'd be fine. But just in case, I say we pack our bags. That's what I'm already doing, already guys. Did that. Pack your bags, okay, make sure you have a, a one whole thing of water per person and make sure that all your phones are charged, okay? So go downstairs in the lobby if you need to. Journey's down there, we charge all the phones, get water, have everything packed, and then I think we're gonna be just fine and we can go to sleep. Anyway, all right, so everyone go pack your stuff. Let's say a prayer really fast, especially for the people in Lahaina, because that's really sad. All right, so as you guys heard, as you guys heard, well, I heard that you were um, doing dra putting dramatic music over the top of that. That was insane. Like, it's not a dramatic event. It's not a, a film or a movie or anything like that. It's a real life for a, a lot of people who uh, unfortunately died. And you are making a movie out of it. A five-parter going to just kind of start packing our bags and just have them ready to go just in case and then we're just gonna go to sleep we offered a prayer for the families and we hope everybody's safe and i don't know it's just it's really bad out there and yeah load all of our luggage in the dark with the help of these flashlights from our phones and then we will yeah, go to bed and hope we can sleep and we want to wake up everything will be okay thanks to amazing firefighters I'm sure that are out there risking their life to make sure everyone's safe. So thank you firefighters. All right, Edger's got his jammies on. You lay down right there, Mr. Dude. Okay, so I gotta get, this is my outfit for tomorrow. I'm putting in my carry-on. I actually found one more of these. I'm gonna bring this down to the lobby. Maybe some people will be able to use it. I think we'll be okay. There's a lot of cars over there moving. Yeah, it looks like it's going down a little bit. I think we're gonna be okay. I think it's going down. I think we're gonna be fine. But just in case, I think I'm going to finish. I think I'm gonna let all the kids finish packing. Make sure we all have water, make sure all of our stuff is charged and just we have like an evacuation plan. We've already decided like where we're gonna meet. If for some reason it does come over to the PA that we need to evacuate, we have a specific place that we're going to meet in front of the Royal Scoop, which everyone knows where that is because that's where we get ice cream the whole time. It's on the back lawn, not the front where everyone else will be meeting. And so hopefully we would be okay. We all kind of have that in plan in place. So it's hard as we can't text each other. Like you don't realize what a big deal it is to not be able to text each other. Like even though we're like in different rooms, we have to actually go to that room to tell somebody something. Even gathering everybody to my room took us a solid 15 to 20 minutes to gather everybody because everyone was all over the hotel. And so good to come up with an evacuation plan. And one thing I do wish is before it got dark, I wish that I would have thought about like packing all of our stuff, but didn't realize how close that fire was or how big it was until it got dark. And so that's kind of when it got a little bit more scary. Um, but I feel confident to stay here. Like I said, I spoke with a nice guy at the front desk who was really worried about his family and the highness. So we're praying for him and for his family. Um, but I asked him point blank, I said, you know how many kids I have? You know my family, like, would you evacuate now? Like, is the fire getting close enough? Or at what point would you evacuate? Because if you announce over the PA, is there gonna be like, everyone's afraid, so people start kind of going crazy a little bit. And he's like, no, I think you are safer here at the hotel than out there with the wind and everything with all your little kids. And he said, I think that we will tell you guys in plenty of time if we need to evacuate because, you know, they, they're used to this, they know how to stay safe and so forth. And so anyway, I don't know that they're used to this, but they know how to stay safe and they have have um, an evacuation plan, I guess. So we go off of what he said to do and just try to be calm. And little Ledger has the right idea. He's resting while we pack our bags. And so I think we're gonna be okay. I'll let you know if anything changes, but for as for now, we're packing our bags and we're just gonna go to sleep. So I guess I'll talk to you in the morning. So yeah, that was pretty much it, how it unfolded, how um, the Nelson fam managed to navigate their way through this huge tragedy that they were, you know, filming um, for their own memories, obviously. And um, as you can see, it's not 
entirely selfless what they're doing, right? I know a lot of you will probably think be thinking, oh, well, they're giving the money away. And that's good, obviously. But I can assure you that they do not need to give any money from vlogs. They don't need to do any fundraising. They don't need to do anything. They have more than enough money to, um, to just give away themselves. They can literally donate whatever they want whenever they want to and they should and um, they should definitely not have filmed this they should definitely not have uploaded it to youtube and it gains them like followers because of the their perceived good deed that they're doing and people follow them those people who follow them then go and watch other videos um, which makes them more money it's just that's how youtube works and uh, a lot of youtubers kind of do this and they get away with it because they, they seem to be this really nice family that do good deeds for nothing and it, no, there's not many good deeds that are selfless on youtube unfortunately so please think about that don't give me too much hate <laughs> and please see it for what it is you know, it was an absolute tragedy what happened. Nobody should have been filming, um, trying to get the best angles, the best shots, the best thumbnails, posing for thumbnails and things like that. Because all this is premeditated, especially the posing for thumbnails. You know that they're thinking, what angle can we get? Who can we get in the thumbnail? What can we, you know... That, that was all their thought process during a tragedy. And um, that, in my opinion, is not right. So until next time, please give this video a massive thumbs up. Comment all your thoughts down below about this. Give the people of Maui some prayers and, and nice thoughts as well. And subscribe to my channel if you're new. Until next time, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.